here I am with Fran Waldman in her beautiful garden, Hummingbird Haven. And she's here to just tell us a little bit about her success and uh, her years of attracting hummingbirds to Red Bank, New Jersey. Fran, you've been doing this for a long time, is that correct? I started around four years ago really concentrating on getting the hummingbirds here by planting things that I knew, plants that would attract them. I randomly saw one in my yard and I, I was just mesmerized. I was like, I've got to get more of these here. I would get a couple of plants if you have air, an area to put them, some perennials. So I would come back every year, get bigger and better, like the honeysuckle is one, which is definitely an attraction. The procosmia, which blooms later on in the summer, is definitely an attractor. And the feeders, put out the feeders, because they will come to the feeders too. And what I actually do is right here, I'll set up a bunch of different pots and containers with the plants that they love. And Things like zinnias work great in pods, beard's tongue, petunia, salvia, and I'll just set up this whole little, I call it my staging area, and then I have my window right here, and lots of times if I'm in the house, I'll look out and I'll see a hummingbird right here. I can take some really great pictures of them, because the lighting gets really nice in the afternoon, and it's close enough to the house, I could zoom in on them and get these really incredible photos. What is it about hummingbirds that fascinates you? They are just really magical. The way they move, they're so small, they're just so beautiful. And they really do relate to you. Like I have a feeder at my dining room window and they come up to the window and they look in the window at me. <laughs> yeah, they're very friendly. They're, they're the most people friendly birds. They'll come up to you. I haven't had one in my hand, but people have them like they'll have feeders in their hand and they land in their hand. Every night around 8 o'clock we get a male hummingbird here. He comes at like clockwork at 8 o'clock and goes to this honeysuckle and he'll stay here for like 4 to 8 minutes. And what happens is usually the male comes first, scouts out the territory, finds a place to build a nest. The male comes, she lays her eggs. And we have seen a female here, here too, so I'm hoping that there's a nest somewhere nearby. They're really active just before dark because they like to fuel up for the night, because then they sleep for the night, so they need a lot of fuel. The honeysuckle is an early bloomer that always like gets them here early, and all these will die off, and then I'll have a second blooming later on in the, in the season. I have some things here that will eventually bloom that will attract them. This is um, turtle head. That comes later in the season. It's got a really pretty pink flower that they like. Beard's tongue. This mm -hmm. one they really like a lot. This is Procosmia. This gets these really pretty bright red flowers and they love this. If you want to put something you're going to guarantee get them. I would do this and I would do the honeysuckle in the garden. How much of that creativity and artisticness goes into your garden? Well, I like different levels. So I have things up high, I have things down low, and wherever there's an empty spot, I'll put a plant so there's no rhyme or reason to it. But I just like the different levels of the garden. Bird watching in this yard is phenomenal. I've seen orioles, which I've never seen before. And they like nectar too, and they go to the hummingbird feeders. I saw a blue bunting, which is very rare for this area, a couple of weeks ago. Stick around here the whole the whole summer. And it's probably not just this garden. We'll go, I mean, they can go anywhere. It's incredible. Oh